Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are going to be changing the screen on our Apex Maker X1. Before we get started, word from our sponsors and roll those credits. PCBWay are proud sponsors of the channel. They offer industry-leading 3D printing services covering all types of materials and processes. They also offer industry-leading online CNC machine services from milling, machining, and turning in all the materials you could possibly need. They also offer a fully online prototyping PCB service. Everything from assembly through to design, you can do it all online with an easy system to use for quality. So for all of your needs, check out PCB Way in the link in the video description. Okay, so this was bound to happen eventually, um, but we kind of accelerated it a little bit. So um, the screens on MSLA printers, as we all know, are consumable parts. You normally get anywhere between two and 5,000 hours out of a screen, which is a lot. It's even l more prints when you're printing as quickly as you are with the Apex Maker. Unfortunately, we had some cured resin on our on our bill plate uh, we homed the machine uh, i think there was also a little bit of support material that had broken off that was in the vat the bill plate went down and it's cracked the screen screen is a consumable part on these machines and it really does come back to the fact that you just need to make sure that everything is clean your vat isn't you know polluted with anything whenever you're using this so look it was gonna happen eventually it's a little annoying that we only got about a thousand hours out of the screen so we've printed for um we've we've been using it now for for just over just over two months i think um yeah just over two months uh we've been printing near enough 24 hours a day. <laughs> um, so we've been putting a lot of models through this. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and unfortunately, you know, um, we, we probably only probably got less than a thousand hours. You probably got about, we probably got about seven, 800 hours out of it um, before we broke it. So let's dive in to what we need to do now. Let's start by opening the box and seeing what we get. So as you can see, this is obviously a huge box. We have a giant 16 inch panel in this machine. So, uh, so it's obviously a really, uh, a really big box and this needs to be well protected. So inside of all of this packaging, we have a screen so you can see this box is all that comes in this big one so we can get rid of this big box now and we are left with this Pengji is the manufacturer to do that and you can see that what we have in here is the screen so you can see that this does come sealed and it comes with a new plate of glass as well. So um, when you go to these big screens, you will have the screen and then you'll have normally a plate of glass as well so that this screen is nice and supported in between. So let's move into getting the old one out. So for a lot of people, this feels like a very intimidating affair. Um, it doesn't need to be, it really doesn't. Um, we pull the vat out, pop the vat over on a clean surface, and you can see here we've got a gasket that goes around the screen. So we're just going to peel that off. This is going to give me a chance to give this a little bit of a clean with some IPA as well. 
Um, this particular screen did not come with a spare gasket, but the machine did come with a spare gasket. So I do have a spare gasket to go around the outside. So let's give this a clean up and then we can start disconnecting the screen. Okay, so you can see here we have these seven screws along the back. So let's start by removing these. They are not torqued down or anything like that. They are to hold in this plate. So when you do these up, you should not be using a power drill or anything else. This is just... So you want to get a corner of a spatula and there are these plastic bars that sit in here. These are spacers to the edge. They help to make sure that your screen stays center. We don't have spares of these, so you're going to want to make sure that when you get these out, you're not too aggressive with them because these are going to get reused. So there we go. These ones on the front are broken up into three sections because here we have the connectors on the front. So we're just going to pry these up as well. Now, to make sure that you don't put any tension on the ribbon cable that's attached to this because it, because it doesn't slot out of here super easily. So what we're doing is there are three screws on top and there are three screws underneath. And that will allow you to very carefully, there we go, pop off that front panel. This screen cable will more than likely pull out as it did just then. Blue side faces up when you put this back in, but we're gonna move this to one side for the moment. This gives you a good look at the Chi2 box board that's in here. This is an E10 Chi2 board with the breakout board as well. We have this uh, cable here, which is taped and sealed into this here. So again, pins would be facing inwards. So we can see under here, we can then pull this off. There's a little bit of tape on the outside there. And then there is just a little black clip, which we just ping. These go pin side facing the board, both ends, okay? But we don't want this damaged, so we're gonna take that out for the moment. So that gets that out of the way. Now we're gonna remove the panel. So the easiest way to push this out, because there is a little bit of adhesive on the glass on the bottom, is there are four screws here and here underneath which hold this control panel in. That'll let us tilt this control panel out and get our hands underneath so that we can push from the inside. So we can get our hands underneath and we can now push from the inside, which will release. It's a tight fit. There we go. And that releases the glass and screen. That's the glass coming out. Um, if you've got these, uh, which are sort of like suckers, you can use those to get the panel out. Um, but the glass and the panel are quite heavy and they have got these sticky parts on them. So best off to, uh, to remove that front panel to let all of this free. Now we do just wanna make sure we clear up some of this sticky stuff. We don't want anything to stop that screen from sitting flush. So we're gonna take the screen. We are going to make sure we put it in the right way up. <laughs> we're gonna drop this through that slot there and this glass should fit quite nicely and snugly into. So point of fact earlier, we didn't need to undo these seven screws clearly. Um, they obviously hold. They obviously hold in something here. We didn't need to undo those, so that was uh, <laughs> that was a waste of effort. But we do now need to put our cable back in. So again, remember pin side to the board. 
goes through this hole on the front of here, making sure we bring through this one as well. And again, pin side to the board on this control board. These pins are very, very fragile. You do need to be very careful. So I'm gonna get all this screwed back together, make sure we reconnect this little ribbon cable here, and make sure when we put the front back on, we do this, uh, we make sure we, uh, we attach the screen back to it as well. So I'll do that now. So remember that we need to pop our spacers back in. So these go in at the sides. And at the front here. sides as well. We also have our gasket, which is gonna go over the top. So the gasket is back on. Now we're gonna go for the front screen. So remember, plug this into the side of the board with the blue tape facing upwards. And that will let you slot that back into place like that. So before we screw this in, let's give the screen a little test. We're back on the screen. We're going to press the second icon down, which is a bunch of screens, a bunch of squares. You click exposure test. We're going to do the checkerboard for 30 seconds and you can see nice and even black squares where they're supposed to be, white squares where they're supposed to be, everything working. We can press back and we know that that's doing everything it should. So let me just put my screws back in the outside of this. And there we have it, guys and dolls. That is the screen change. The one other thing you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure you reset your Z offset. You've changed the screen. Screen may be ever so slightly higher or ever so slightly lower. Bear in mind that we're dealing with 0.05 microns in layers, so you will need to redo the Z offset. Don't need to re-level your bed. Don't forget that. This bed doesn't really need to be leveled. It comes leveled as it stands. But you do need to uh, reset your Z offset. But other than that, it really is a relatively easy thing to do. Um, I did try originally just using the suckers to pull that screen out, but because the screen is glued directly to the glass, they're not separate, getting that glass out without taking out that front panel really isn't possible without it cracking. Remember, if you try and jam a, try and jam a spatula down the side and pry it, A, you're gonna crack the glass and you're gonna be left with little bits of glass in the gully and it's gonna be a real nightmare to try and clean up. So you wanna, you wanna remove that front panel, remove that control board so you can push up from the inside nice and evenly, just so you can break that seal on the, uh, on the glue that's holding that in. But other than that, guys and dolls, we are, we are done. Thanks very much for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the link in the video description if you want to go and get your own Apex Maker. Uh, they still are on sale for a little while. Uh, they are still on Kickstarter, but we will also put a link to their, uh, to their retail site so that when they go into retail production, you can check them out there instead. Thanks very much for joining. Happy printing. Catch you on the next video.